20 bucks. 20 bucks. On the line for 20 bucks. They keep on playing, but nobody's paying. More than some nickels and some dimes. Hi guys, it's Jabor out of Montreal, a really great band. Go on to their YouTube and have a look, you'll be blown away. I'm Maggie, Mrs. Calabash, so come into my kitchen. Uh, today you notice that we've got the sailing boat out, we're going to sail across the ocean. We're going to Persia for uh, a typical, it's a traditional Persian dish and it's sausage and potato skillet. And then we're going to go into Thailand uh, for a Thai salad. So come back with me to the stove and I'll be running backwards and forwards. So come back with me. Uh, to begin with, let's have a look. I've got everything set out here, you see. Where do I start? I think I'm going to just move this over to the back. That's for the Thai, uh, that's for the um, Persian. I just want to get the oil hot. And in here, I've got a little oil. Let's make sure everything's off. I've got a little oil that I want to heat up. It's clicking on me. Oh, that's it. Uh, and we're going to make the sauce to begin with for the Thai salad because it's a cold salad and we have to just cook the sauce and let it cool a little bit. So let me have the recipe. So I've got the oil in the skillet, which we're getting to get nice and hot. Uh, I hadn't got a skillet so I'm, uh, of the right size that I wanted, so I'm using a pan. And we're going to put in here, I've got, can you see that, Derek? Yeah. I've got garlic and I've got, um, I've got garlic and ginger. So I'm just going to put that in there. Here it sizzle, a nice sizzle. Just want to cook that until it becomes fragrant. There we are. And then I, I have to look at this just to make sure that I don't get everything back to front. I'm very good at doing that, as you probably noticed. Um, to, uh, chili paste. Now, to make chili paste, uh, a little chili powder and tomato paste, like that. And I'm just going to add a drop of water to that. A tiny drop. Come on, just a drop. There we are. Just to make that into a paste, like that. So don't go out and buy chilli paste, use your chilli powder. I mean, the whole idea of cooking is to use what you've got, quite honestly, you know, within reason. Uh, don't go out and buy something special. Um, look in the cupboard, see what you've got, see what you can adapt. I'm a big believer in that. So we've got the chilli paste in there and we need soy sauce and maple syrup in there and rice vinegar. I've got all that in there and some peanut butter. Let's stir the peanut butter in. Ooh, it's smelling good. Let me just make sure I've got everything. Yes. We're just going to stir that, turn the heat up just a little. Stir that until it's all, all been uh, absorbed. All the peanut butter has been absorbed. And then we're going to stir in some coconut milk. Yes. You can start to smell the spices and the coconut and the, um, and the peanut. So stir in some coconut milk. Now, I'm, as you know, I'm a bit fussy when it comes to coconut milk. You can buy various coconut milks and some have a thickening in it. They've got agar agar in, which is a, a it's a, a seaweed and it's a thickener uh, but the one that I like 
is a medium priced coconut milk and it's just got coconut milk and water and that's all it's got in there. So that's the one that I prefer if I can find it. So let's just stir this until it's nice and smooth. And we're going to remove that from the heat and just let it cool. There we are. I'm going to taste that just to see that uh, it does taste good. Let's just have a little taste. Mmm. Oh, yes. It's got a nice sweetness to it, but I'm going to I'm going to take it off the heat. I'm just going to add. I don't want any pepper in there, but I'm just going to add a little a little salt for my taste, and then we'll have another taste. It's lovely. It's lovely and smooth and silky. Oh, that's very good. Yes. Let's just remove this. So go back to the butcher block. Put it on there. Actually, excuse me, I'm going to dive into the cupboard because I want it to cool. I want it to cool quite quickly. And it won't cool in the pan because of the heat from the pan. So let's just... I'm going to slip that in the fridge because I don't want to put the hot, I don't want to put a hot sauce on, on the vegetables. It will make them go all limp. So let me just slip this in the fridge. I should have some space. Yes, there we are. You shouldn't really do that. You shouldn't put a hot, a hot liquid in the fridge. But uh, hey, it's an exception today. You're an exception, so come back with me to the butcher block. Now, over here, I do have some coconut oil heating up in this pan. And I'm going to fry, let's just move that. I'm going to fry off the onions along with the sausage. I know on the... Um, instructions it, it uh, tells you to do it separately but I cheated a little bit today I've already cooked the potatoes uh, because of time uh, we have a time constraint and so I always like to cook my onions with um, with everything because I think it gives a nice flavor now this is I'm using Italian sausage today you can use it sausage of choice and I'm going to have to get my hands in there it's supposed to be in half moons well what I did I took the castings the casings off because I find that when I cut the sausage into slices the casings start floating around and they get hard and I don't like them so I've just cut the sausages down that way and then crosswise so Cut in half lengthways and then crosswise. I like the Italian sausage because it's got a little bit of spice to it. I'm just going to wash my hands, look. Never be afraid to wash your hands in the kitchen. When we were teaching the children, when we had the children's classes, I used to say, look, you can wash your hands as many times as you like. And oh, <laughs> that was a mistake with some of them. As soon as they touched something, they were at the sink. Well, I'd rather them wash the hands. Uh, I'd rather them wash the hands than go around with, um, with sticky fingers and be unhygienic. And it was very good. And I had, um, I used to teach... Uh, the children's classes in one class I have five little autistic boys and I taught them for five years so they got to know me and and trusted me and they were really good each one could do 
various things. One of them was fantastic. It was so neat and tidy and it's so colour conscious that all these colours matched. And if we, if we did any icing, if we iced uh, an Easter cake or something, he'd have all these beautiful colours all going down in shade and beautiful icing. He was fantastic, but I had another little boy and he uh, he was a trouble to begin with. He didn't, he would, he ran out of the class a few times. I had to bring him back. And, um, and in the end, he was one of my best pupils, but he hated his hands getting dirty. I couldn't ask him to need, um, we made pizza. And it was too much to ask him to get his hands in. He just couldn't do it. So, and one just liked chopping. He just chopped everything. So it was great. And they cooked some lovely things. And it got to the stage where the parents, uh, they used to sit out in the mezzanine. And it got to the stage because we used to have evening classes, you know, uh, early night. And the parents, to begin with, used to order a meal from the meals to go and then it did actually get as long as they left me a phone number where they could go to the local restaurant just across the car park and actually have a meal out so that was great fun I miss them I miss them an awful lot so these are cooking nicely and where are we that's the Thai salad you see I've got everything ticked along here I've got an onion, sausages, and on here I've got a tablespoonful of oregano, smoked paprika because it's got that nice smoky flavour, cumin, and that is um, turmeric. Now I've, I've got uh, dried turmeric today, um, but if you're lucky enough, and it's coming in more and more, you can buy fresh organic turmeric and it's about that long and it does look a bit like a ginger root so you can treat it the same way as you could ginger just peel it and grate it but remember if it says here um, what does it say I've got um, a teaspoonful of dried turmeric it would be tea, two teaspoons of fresh turmeric, but treat it the same way as as you can um, a, ginger, a piece of root ginger. Now that's co cooking nicely, so I'm going to add the spices. And you know why we're adding the spice at this stage, so that they actually cook and don't taste raw and it releases all the fragrance so just cook that until you can start to smell can you smell anything yet Derek? Smell great! <laughs> I'm hungry! He's always hungry <laughs> the only time he's not hungry is when I do rice <laughs> and then as you know I have to um, I have to um, I have to do some noodles for him so tomato paste i buy the tomato paste in a tube uh, unless i'm going to use a lot in a recipe and then i've always got it and i'm not wasting any so look for it in a tube if you don't use a lot of tomato paste i add it to all sorts of things even if I have a can of baked beans, I sometimes add just a little tomato paste because I have to be careful with the baked beans. Um, I have to look on the side and see um, how much sugar they've got in. So some, some makes have got a lot more sugar than others. So there we are. Now, this is the stage where you would have, cooked, you would have sauteed these first to cook, but I've already cooked the potatoes so we're just stirring these in until they cook so I'm going to put 
I'm going to have a taste, see if it needs any more seasoning, and put these on the back of the stove just to heat through. And that is all. I'm going to add a drop of water to this actually. It looks a little bit a little bit dry. Mm. It's got a, a nice bite to it. But just let me add a drop of water. We'll use the remainder of the coconut milk. In fact, I'll go into the fridge and add a drop of coconut milk. This is the thing with cooking. Improvise. You know, what you like, what you don't like. Yeah. So come back to the fridge with me. Let's have a look. Can I find it? That's the next question. Oh, yes, it's in front of my eyes. I'm going to add... A little drop of coconut milk, not traditional, but that's the way I like it. So, when you're cooking, use your imagination. Look at that. Beautiful. Just stir the potatoes round. Look, that's absolutely gorgeous. Look at that sauce. And we can always add a drop more water. There's a little left in there. There we are. So where's the pan lid? There we are. Turn that down. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the spices have got to me. There we are. Let's just turn that down. And so you see, it's a very quick, easy meal to get ready. But it is quite substantial. That's why I thought we would eat a Thai salad with it just to be a little bit lighter you see we don't want to make too much heat in the kitchen it's uh, as the weather gets warmer my kitchen gets very very hot so we have to um, I have to sort of um, watch what I'm cooking quite honestly I don't put the oven on very often in, in summer I must confess that's why I've got the little toasty oven um, just uh, occasionally I need to cook in the oven so there's only if there's only two of us I use that so come back over with me whoa there we are now we've got the Thai salad <sighs> I love this bean shoots just wash the bean shoots first um, look at the bean shoots in the store uh, I live in the country and Sometimes the bean shoots are a little, a little overripe, and so I don't touch them. I like them to be nice and clear. And we've got grated carrot. So let's put the grated carrot in. You can either, I grated this by hand, uh, but I was thinking whilst I was doing it, I should have used a food processor so much easier I just don't think sometimes so I like just to I'm mixing it in a bowl before I put it in my serving dish because I, I like to make sure that everything starts to get combined I want the carrot to stick to the bean shoots and not be in a clump uh, look can you see, they clump. I want it to mix the bean shoots and stick to the bean shoots. Slice green onion. I use all the onion. I don't just use, uh, I just don't use the white bits. There we are. And we've got some lime juice which just brings out all the flavors and some crushed peanuts now if you've got somebody coming for a meal and you're not quite sure whether they've got uh well for this dish anyway just check that they're not they don't have a peanut allergy because the sauce has got peanuts in so just check that uh, if somebody's coming for a meal they don't have a peanut allergy um, it's you don't want to put somebody in hospital so 
crushed peanuts. I've got unsalted peanuts here. I don't because um, we've got the sauce and everything, and I didn't want the salted peanuts. That's just a question of choice. And lime juice, lime juice or lemon juice. I prefer lime juice. It's that little bit tartar. There we are, you see. And now we're going to put the, this is why I wanted the uh, sauce to be cool. Let's just put this on. Where is it? Here we are. <coughs> Excuse me. Look, it's a nice, a nice sauce. We're going to have another taste before we put it over, just to make sure. Because taste, uh, the, the taste when something's hot to something's cool or cold, the taste can alter. Um, don't put too much salt in when it's hot, because as it cools, sometimes that salt intensifies. Uh, the same if you if you making a dish and then going to reheat the next day, your spices and your salt will intensify, and this is the same if you're freezing. If you're freezing a dish, go a little bit light on the spices and salt because as it freezes again, the flavors intensify. Oh yes. That is good. We don't want to waste any. I love these little spoons. Look, they they go, they they work like a spatula. And so, you don't waste anything. When I was manufacturing, I I had a student called Maria. Oh, if she could break anything, she did. Anything electrical, never let Maria against anything electrical. She, she was a, a student from the culinary school. And she was bottling one day um, because everything was uh, hand bottled. And so she was bottling. And she didn't scrape out the bottom of the, uh, of the uh, uh, what she was using. And I said, scrape that out. Oh, no. I said, scrape that out. That is the difference between profit and loss. You'll probably get about three different jars out of that. Yeah. Oh, she was a trial. A lovely girl, but uh, I did get her there in the end, and she did qualify, but uh, it was quite, uh, quite the journey. So let's just put this in the bowl. I like to use a glass bowl for this because of the colours, but that's just a personal taste. So let's just scrape everything down so we don't waste anything after my lecture on Maria. There we are. So you see, by scraping, look how much we've got. There we are. We'll just sit that over there. That looks a bit, yeah, a little bit dull. Let me just brighten it up a little bit. These have been washed. Take out the inside of the peppers. I always like to cut away the white bits and I always try to keep a pepper in the in the fridge just for decoration. So let's just make it look pretty. As my daughter used to say when she was little, 
she used to, are you going to make it look pretty today, Mum? And she meant, am I going to decorate it? There we are. That's going to fall off, look. And this is, this is quite handy. It's got the jimpy edges, so I can actually, look, I can actually secure the, the bits of pepper. Lovely. So we'll wipe the table. And it needs a bit of greenery, don't you think? So I've got some cilantro here. It's sitting in water and it's all been rinsed so that you can always serve chopped cilantro with this or chopped basil. And uh, it adds that nice bit of crunch to it. All the flavours go together, you see. Whoa, there we are. And that's the Thai salad. So let's go back and have a look to see how the Persian sausage is doing. It's cooking well. Oh yeah, that's cooked. Lovely, turn it off. I know that seasoning's good. Ah, I moved my, there we are. Ooh, lovely. I'm getting quite peckish. Put this into the serving dish. Again, scrape out well. Get rid of that. Don't put the hot pan onto the working surface. Again, it looks a little bit anemic. So let's see what we've got. Mm. Add a little bit of colour and I'll add on this one, seeing as we've got tomato paste in there, I'll add a little bit of tomato on the top, a couple of slices of tomato. Don't forget you eat with your eyes. So if it looks attractive, you're going to be more tempted to, to eat. I dropped a tomato, excuse me. There we are. We'll cut these in half like this. And there's the Persian sausage skillet. And we go out with Jabup, Jabour, not Jabup. And please go on to Facebook, Mrs. Calabash Cooks, and look up the recipes and like and suggest a friend. Just post it on to a friend. So thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, stay well, and I will see you again next week. And